previously we did a, a sort of tour of the Arduino Uno board, uh, just went around and, and said what the various components do. Now we're going to write a sketch or a program, so that's the, the code that's going to run on the chip to turn our outputs on and off or whatever. But we're just going to write one that's going to turn the LED that's on pin 13 on, then off, then on, then off. That's sort of the hello world equivalent. In, in the electronics world, um, you can't write hello world to a screen, so you blink an LED. It's pretty much the first thing you do when you come to a new um, environment. So there's a special program called the Arduino IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. Um, the best way to think of it is it's like Notepad, so simple text editor, and then a bunch of other tools that let you program the Arduino with what you've written. So what you write is just text, characters like in Notepad, um, and then it's those special tools that are also built into the program that take that text they have to go through what's called a compilation stage, compile, which is taking that text, making the machine code, the binary code, that actually gets stored on here. It has to uh, make that on the laptop and then send it down the USB cable to store it on the microcontroller. Whenever you power it or, or reset it, that code starts running. All those tools are built into this thing called the Arduino IDE integrated development environment. If you go to, uh, I think it's arduino.cc, you can just download it. They've kept it deliberately quite simple. You, you can go to much more complex ones for microcontrollers that do all sorts of clever things, but of course they've, Arduino is meant to be simple for beginners, for hobbyists, for makers. So there's the interface you can see is quite clean. There's only five buttons. Three of those are save, open and new, which are in every program. <laughs> when you open Arduino, you get a sketch pre-prepared for you. So it, it fills in some of the blanks for you. You've got two functions that every Arduino sketch needs to have, and they're called setup and loop. And so setup um, even gives you comments, which in this language start with two slashes. Put your setup code here to run once. The first code that runs when you plug power in, when you press reset, first lines of code that run. What is the language? Is it a specific, special language? Um, or? It's a derivative of what they call wiring. Um, but it, the, ultimately the language it, you type into the editor is called C, is C++. Which so if, if people already know that, they could just pick this up, can they? Yes. The only thing you'd need to learn on top would be the Arduino code libraries. As well as um, making the hardware nice and easy for you, so you don't have to think about it, um, they've made the code nice and easy. So all the mucking about, dealing with writing to individual registers in the microcontroller, making sure that the timers are set up correctly, all kind of messy things that um, you'd normally have to do is all hidden away. So you can just say, turn this pin on, and it goes and does it. One advantage is that you don't have to do all that, and you don't have to do it for every different chip. So different Arduino's might have different chips, all of which need a slightly different way of controlling them. Um, the code library knows which chip you're using, and it can um, do the right thing for, for that particular chip. We're going to be using the LED on pin 13. Now, normally, the digital inputs, outputs, default to being inputs, so they're reading. Um, that's kind of the, the, safe, the safest thing. You don't want it defaulting to an output, suddenly turning a motor on as soon as you plug power in. That might be dangerous, things like that. So the default to being inputs, just reading, which is, which is safer. We need to tell it, hey, we want, we want it to be an output. So we're going to put a line of code in here, which is pin mode. You see that when you type a, a keyword in, something that the language is aware of, it turns it orange or sometimes blue. So that's something that the IDE gives you as well. When you've typed something correctly, it goes a different color, so you know you've got it right. We're using pin 13, so we tell it 13, comma, output, this should turn blue, which it does. And we close the brackets and put a semicolon in. So we've told it the pin mode of 13 to be an output. So that's gonna then configure the internal hardware to for pin 13 to um, drive current, and put voltage on that that pin and turn the LED on or off. That's all we need to do in the setup. And once it's finished the code in the setup, that runs once, then it goes into loop. It runs all the code in loop till it gets to the bottom and goes back to the top and starts again. And will, as it says, run repeatedly forever until you pull power or press reset. So the first thing we want to do in the loop is turn the LED on. That's a function called digital write. We need to tell it which pin it is. It's pin 13 and high. And high says put five volts on it. That's going to send current flowing through the LED, lighting it up. Then we need to wait for a bit of time. We can't just turn it off straight away because that happens in microseconds and you'll never see it. 
So we're going to turn it to delay and then give it a number of microseconds to delay for. So let's delay for 500 microseconds, which is half a second. Then we need to turn it off. I'm going to be lazy and copy the digital right line because it's exactly the same and then just change high to low and then I'm going to copy the delay line and put it again there. So we've got four lines of code, turn the LED on, wait for half a second, turn it off, wait for half a second and then I'll go back and start again. Now I've done that, the first button up here, this tick, is verify. All that's going to do is do the compile stage. It's going to check that it makes sense, is that Yes, right? pretty much, yeah. Okay. It's going to check that it at least makes sense logically. It may not do what you want, uh, but it, it's um, so it's, not gonna, it, it's, it's a sane program. Is what so it's, it's basically it's like looking at a sentence and saying, well, the grammar's correct and there's a full stop at the end. Yeah, it, it could be still be complete gobbledygook. Rubbish, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's asking me to save it, um, so I'll, I'll save it and then bring this window up a bit. So the compile stage, it takes your bit of code. It has to combine that with all the Arduino libraries to form this single blob of binary data that's going to be sent down. And you can see it says done compiling. It gives you a nice bit of output. So it's going to use exactly 1,030 bytes. So that's just over a kilobyte of storage space, which is 3% of the total. And it's telling me I'm using nine bytes of dynamic memory, which is 0% <laughs> rounded down, I'm guessing. On this particular device, there's 32K of memory for your program and then 2K of RAM. You can put, put your sophisticated programs in that amount of space. So that's done compiling, so we know that at least it's, it's gonna send down. Now we need to tell the Arduino IDE which USB port this Arduino is connected to and, um, and what sort of Arduino it is. So under tools here, we're interested in board. We make sure that Arduino Uno is selected. Arduino has appeared to Windows as serial COM ports. Where they are USB devices, they appear to be serial so they appear as COM ports. And there it is, it's on COM24, and you can see it's, it's self-identified as an Arduino Uno, so we know which one it is. So now we can press this button, Upload. Upload actually compiles again, because you, you might have changed your code in the meantime. Earlier versions of Arduino would compile everything again. This just is a bit better at detecting what's changed. And then it uploads. All you really see is the TX and RX LEDs flickering for a moment. That's it, doesn't take long. And then the LED starts blinking. For the analog input, it needs to know a base level to correctly convert the voltages on these pins into numbers. Most of the time, I think IOF is just left alone. Then putting that knowledge back into the algorithm so the algorithm can learn from it again and to sort of reinforce it a bit. 